Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome back to the uh, channel. I know I said I wasn't going to do a genetics video like two videos ago, but here I am. But yeah, today I just want to make a video on Southern European genetics. Um, it's something that I've been, it's a video that I've wanted to make for a while now, but I'm just uh, just now getting around to it. Um, but yeah, I think it's a very interesting topic because I, th it, there's so many misconceptions about it. Um, you know, you see these sort of uh, memes going around, right, of, uh, you know, and, and a lot of it's just banter from 4chan, right? A lot of it's, you know, not that serious, but these sort of uh, memes, these jokes, these, uh, uh, I, I like, almost like tropes. They're, they are tropes in media as well of, um, you know, Southern Europeans being super racially mixed, of them being, you know, uh, either the, you know, the product of, like, miscegenation with, like, more, like black moors or something or arabs or a combination of those two and you know that's that's really just like not really the case i mean the moors weren't black that's just like it's like a mythological that's like a mythicized thing that's not true um you know and and, and we'll just get into we're, we're going to get into the sort of you know uh, you know supposed you know more moorish invasion uh, thing later. So yeah, I just wanted to see, you know, how, how true these claims are, uh, you know, cause I like Southern Europeans. I think Southern Europeans are cool and, you know, uh, I'm not Southern European myself, but you know, it's not, it's not, um, uh, good to have these misconceptions around, you know what I mean? And, and you know, like I said, a lot of this is just their, their jokes, their memes, you know, Nords versus meds, whatever it's, you know, all, it's all just fun and games, but you know, really in media, there is a serious thing where, um, um, you know, Southern Europeans are said to be like, like part black or something. Um, you know, it's like that, uh, it's like that one mafia movie. I, I can't think of it off the top of my head, but you know, the guy's making, the guy's making fun of the, uh, the mafia members. Uh, you know, there, there's that. I, I don't, the name of the movie escapes me, but I'll put it up on screen. Um, you know, you got the paintings of like the black Moors coming in and just, you know, all this stuff, you know, and, and it really warps people's perception of, you know, the genetic makeup of Southern Europeans. So, you know, here's the model I'm using. This is just a very basic sort of, you know, not nothing too crazy here. Um, so, you know, first off, obviously, we have the big three. We, you know, we have Step, we have Western Hunter Gatherer, we have ANF or EEF, however you want to put it. Um, you know, these are the sort of main components that all uh, European groups have. You know, Northern and Central Europeans are pretty much 100% just step, you know, uh, step herder, Western hunter gatherer, ANF. Um, but, you know, I also just wanted to check for some other things here. So if we were to check for, you know, North African ancestry, um, it would be um, Ibero-Marusian would be. Uh, good for that. That would be a good proxy because um, that is sort of a really big ancestral component to uh, North Africans. And then for, uh, you know, Near Easterners, like I guess you'd say Arabs, Middle Easterners, Egyptians, you know, Natufians, good. Um, uh, Iran Neolithic from Iran, obviously. And uh, ca Caucasus hunter-gatherer, excess Caucasus hunter-gatherer is good to check for. Um, you know, all Europeans have Caucasus hunter-gatherer by way of the uh, the step people but you know if they have an excess amount that you know that probably could come from the near east it's very likely so so anyways without further ado let's just get into it we're going to take a look at these first so i got uh, cypriots maltese portuguese uh the portuguese you know really they're pretty standard southern european trait here they have a lot of uh a and F ancestry, and uh, they have uh, about five percent Ibero-Marusian, so that's uh, you know a, a North African uh, group. So then we have the Maltese. You know they're uh, they're high in A and F as well, but they also have uh, you know it seems to be a significant amount of uh, Near Eastern and North African uh, admixture. So you know then we have the Cypriots. You know high high A and F, uh, a little bit more uh, Near Eastern admixture it seems. Uh, not that surprising, you know, they're right off the coast of uh, the Levant and you know, south of Turkey. So moving on, we're going to take a look at all these Spanish groups next. Um, you know, Spaniards are, I, I think people kind of overestimate how, how mixed, you know, the Spaniards are. You know, you can see most of these, or, or all of these rather, 
you know, all these population averages have, you know, at least a little bit of North African uh, derived ancestry here. But, um, you know, really it, it peaks in uh, the canneries and also with the 1% sub-Saharan African. And yeah, that's not really surprising. I mean, the canneries, they're, you know, off the coast of Morocco. So it's not really a big surprise there. But, you know, really they're just, you know, again, sub they're Southern Europeans. They have a high amount of ANF um, derived ancestry. So moving on, I decided to put the Basque in their own category. The Basque, uh, you know, most of these population averages have, you know, Simply, you know, the, the typical three-way ANF, uh, step herder, uh, western hunter-gatherer, except for one, but that's just a very slight amount there. Um, but really, yeah, it seems that they are characterized by having a lot of ANF ancestry and a sort of lower amount of step herder ancestry when compared to, uh, you know, northern and central Europeans. So moving on to the southern French, I believe I got it right. I believe all of these are... Um, uh, so parts of southern France. Um, so, you know, really they're, they're kind of reminiscent of the Basque almost, and, you know, with the exception of Corsica, which is, you know, it's not even attached to um, to um, uh, mainland France. You know, it's an island. It's above Sardinia, so it's uh, obviously the, they're an entirely different ethnicity almost. But, yeah, like I said, for the most part, the uh, the French aren't really that different, you know, when compared to the Basque. So moving on to various Italian groups, okay? Now, Italians, they do have um, a bit more um, Near Eastern admixture, but, you know, really, I don't think it's as much as, as people would like to think. You know, really, a lot of it is concentrated, of course, in southern Italy and Sicily especially, okay? But, um, you know, really, I don't think it's, you know, that much. I mean, I, you know, if, if we average all of Italy together, including Sardinia, which has a very re remarkably, you know, has a remarkably high amount of ANF um, ancestry. Um, you know, really, it's it's not that high. I, I don't believe so. It's not in, it's not an insignificant amount, but I don't think it's as high as you know people would have thought. You know, like I said, most of it's concentrated in like, you know, Sicily and uh, Campania, so you know, southern Italian um, places. But you know, even even then, it's not. It's not that high, you know. And, you know, look, even some central um, Italian regions like like Tuscany, they, you know, they have some uh, Near Eastern admixture as well. And, you know, I know sort of a, um, there is actually some ethnic tension, you know, within Italy of, you know, northerners not liking southerners, you know, looking down upon them. But, you know, I mean, I guess, you know, this isn't really like North Italy, but, you know, it's central Italy. So it goes to show that it's not, you know, it's not just... Um, you know, southern Italians that have, you know, uh, Near Eastern admixture, it's, you know, it extends to some other groups as well. So moving on to Greece, you know, I'd say in terms of, uh, you know, I guess we'd say mainland Europe, continental Europe, um, I think they have the highest amount of Near Eastern admixture out of everybody. But, you know, I, I really don't think it's, um, again, as much as people would expect. It's not an insignificant amount, of course, but, you know, I really, I don't think it's um, as much as people uh, would expect and you know they really a lot of these groups don't even have any um you know really any east asian admixture I, so like i don't even think that um he you know this this is coming from the uh the you know ottomans or something like that i think this i think this you know came from elsewhere but we're going to get into that a little bit later on in the video so those are my uh, g25 models uh, we're going to move on so this is a paper called Ancient Human Genomes Suggest Three Ancestral Populations for Present-Day Europeans, and they have a really neat um, principal component analysis for all present-day West Eurasians. Now, just right off the bat, I mean, looking at it, you could kind of see how this could, um, I guess, translate or compare to my uh, um, uh, G25 models. And, you know, but also I, I think it really just goes to show that, again, you know, not um, not all Southern Europeans can really be just lumped in as one group. I mean, it really it's more of like a geographic distinction than anything, because, look, I mean, you know, the Southern French, uh, you know, like the French, the uh, the Spaniards, they cluster in one area. Then you've got the uh, what is that? Canary Islanders, uh, Sardinians, they kind of cluster around. I mean, all of them kind of cluster around. Um, early European farmers, but then you know the uh, you know uh, Greeks, Italians, Cypriots. They're they're in a you know a different 
uh, sort of, I guess we could say, a different sort of array up here. And, you know, the uh, the Sicilians, you know, they, they cluster pretty close to, to Ashkenazi Jews, actually. And I would say are roughly equidistant between, uh, like, Englishmen and, um, and um, the Lebanese. So I guess, you know, the biggest takeaway here is that, you know, Canary Islanders, Spaniards, Sardinians, they're closer to, like, you know, early European farmers. Um, but, you know, of course, uh, the ones like, you know, Sicilians and, and uh, other groups like the Maltese, they kind of skew a little bit closer to Near Easterners, a little bit closer to, like, the uh, uh, Levantine people. So at this point, we do know that various Southern European groups do have, you know, North African and Near Eastern admixture. However, not equally so. It's not like equally distributed among all Southern European groups. And, you know, really, you can't just lump them in in, in one category because, you know, the Spaniards, they sort of, uh, they have a little bit of North African admixture, but that's really not the same as, you know, uh, Near Eastern admixture, like, pe people often conflate the two, like, oh, you know, it's, it's just uh, uh, North Africans and Arabs, they're, they're, like, they're like the same thing, bro, it's like, that's not really the case, that's, you know, the, the different, they have different components there, but anyways, so, so this kind of, you know, raises the question, where did this admixture come from, you know what I mean, was it from the Moors, was it from elsewhere, you know, Honestly, I don't really think it was from the Moors. I, 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 you know, seriously, you know, maybe in Spain, I think a lot of that um, ibero uh ancestry, you know, could have definitely come from the Moors. But, um, you know, you think about it, Iberia has always been kind of close to Morocco, right? And I mean, at one point, both Iberia and, or, you know, Hispania and uh, uh, Morocco, like North Africa in general, were under the Roman Empire, right? You know, my point is that it wouldn't have necessarily had to have been the Moors, although that, that's very well possible, I don't know. But, you know, speaking of Rome, here's an interesting paper I found. It is titled, Ancient Rome, A Genetic Crossroads of Europe and the Mediterranean. So I'm just going to read you the abstract here real quick. Ancient Rome was the capital of an empire of about 70 million inhabitants, but little is known about the genetics of ancient Romans. Here we present 127 genomes from 29 archaeological sites in and around Rome, spanning the past 12,000 years. We observe two major prehistoric ancestry transitions, one with the introduction of farming and another prior to the Iron Age. By the founding of Rome, the genetic composition of the region approximated that of modern Mediterranean populations. During the imperial period, Rome's population received net immigration from the Near East, followed by an increase in genetic contributions from Europe. These ancestry shifts mirrored the geopolitical affiliations of Rome and were accompanied by marked inter-individual diversity, reflecting gene flow from across the Mediterranean, Europe, and North Africa. So I just wanted to take a look at the first figure here, you know, the little diagram they have. So it's got a timeline, uh, and it's coupled with, the, you know, the historical events and the genetic events. So during the Mesolithic, for example, uh, Italy was basically mostly Western hunter-gatherer, right? I mean, there was, I guess most of, of Mesolithic uh, Western Europe was like that, so it doesn't really come to a, come as like a surprise or anything. During the Neolithic, of course, the ANF uh, moved in, but it's interesting they say uh, Iranian farmer ancestry... Um, you know, was also present during the Neolithic, and that's quite interesting. That actually kind of took me by surprise the first time I read this. Now, during the Copper and Bronze Ages, uh, you know, there's a rebound of, of Western hunter-gatherer ancestry and Copper Age individuals. That's pretty interesting. So during the Republican period of Rome, and I guess just the Iron Age broadly, um, there was more steppe-related ancestry that came in, which isn't surprising. Um, and, but, you know, more Neolithic Iranian ancestry came in, and actually North African ancestry came in as well. Now, during Imperial Rome, here is where the, the sort of Near Eastern shift happens. And, you know, it, it really isn't that surprising. You know, people think, oh, well, well, it had to have been from, you know, the the Caliphate or something. <laughs> you know, that's where they got their Near Eastern ancestry from. But it's like, no, no, Rome was always connected to the, to the Near East. Right. I mean, you had a huge wave of Syrian migrants come in during the time of Imperial Rome. And, you know, it's really not that surprising. It's really not that, you know, crazy to think about because, you know, Rome actually had a, um, you know, a Syrian emperor, Elagabalus. I'm, you know, I'm sure you, you might have heard of him. 
So, you know, really, it, it makes sense. You know, this Near Eastern element in the Mediterranean is a lot earlier than a lot of people think. Then, of course, in late antiquity, you had the, you know, the Visigoths, the Vandals, the Lombards. Um, and, you know, the medieval and early modern period, you had, you know, uh, the Normans come in as well. And, you know, that sort of uh, ha had a shift towards uh, Central and Northern European ancestry. And, you know, we can take a look at figure two here, the principal component analysis. Um, it really just confirms, like, you know, everything that was uh, said on figure one. And, you know, but do keep in mind that this is, we're, we're just looking at Rome here. And, you know, the reason why I say that is because Rome is a, um, it was just one city and it was, it was a really big city, um, you know, especially during the, the, the Roman Empire, you know, Imperial Rome. And so that's where most of the, the Syrian migrants and such would have moved, you know what I mean? They, they definitely would have moved to a bigger city. So, you know, do keep that in mind. Do, you know, just, you know, keep that in the back of your head that maybe the rural areas of ancient Rome were not that affected. So that's pretty much all I wanted to look at. But, you know, what's my, what's my big takeaway here? What's my point? You know, why did I make this video? Well, you know, I'd raise a few points. For one, not all Southern Europeans can really be lumped together. I mean, look, they're all European. They're all, you know, geographically, I guess we could say, you know, in the Mediterranean. However, they, they really do have some different components from uh, different uh, ancestral, you know, populations, you know, as we saw in, uh, you know, Spaniards versus Italians and Greeks. And, you know, another point I'd bring up is that I feel like people sort of over-exaggerate how much North African or Near Eastern, uh, you know, ancestry some of these Southern European groups have. I mean, I think people think that, oh, you know, necessarily they must have this, um sort of, you know, foreign component, and that's why they're swarthy or whatever. But, you know, really, I, I don't think that's the case. You know, you look at Southern French people, they are quite swarthy, you know what I mean? But w we looked at their, you know, you know, you saw my model, you know, it doesn't, they don't, they don't appear to have a lot of, like, foreign admixture, I guess you could say. But, you know, really, I think this, this North African and Near Eastern admixture really doesn't come from the Moors, Really, it actually goes back further. You know, maybe in in um, Spain, the Moors had something to do with it. But you got to realize that North Africa, um, the Near East, and the Mediterranean, they were all connected by the Roman Empire at one point. And at one point, there was a lot of Syrian migrants. They even had, like I said earlier, a Syrian emperor. So, you know, really, I think that is the... the um, origin point of Near Eastern admixture and North African admixture in Southern Europeans. And I think the genetic data supports me on this. But anyways, guys, that's, that's it. Um, that's all I really wanted to say. I hope you guys are having a great day. And um, yeah, I'll see you soon in the next video. See you guys.